Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to come back to this uh, background check issue. Uh, there are 13 states currently that are not doing background checks uh, for uh, employees that are there or ownership. Obviously, as you mentioned, the loopholes on before. Does that include states that only do a state background check but not a national background check? Are there some states that are only doing a state criminal check but not doing national? Yes, part of the 13 states is 13 states that might have current state background checks in place but have not, for high-risk providers, fully gone through the process of implementing national criminal background checks. So the other 37 states all do a full national criminal background check, not just a state only? Absolutely. However, there are these loopholes that do allow for some opportunity um, to not perform those background checks. Uh, I want to go back to the rating system. That, these were similar to my questions to what Senator Wyden was also talking through before. Uh, the um, number of employees or individuals that may be in the system that there may be a problem with, is that counted into the rating system currently? Can you get a five-star rating and have employees that have been on the sex offender registry or have a, a history of abuse? Yeah, the, the rating system does not directly look at that, does look at broader issues of, of staffing and of inspections, uh, but it's not directly related to, to that particular issue of whether... Is that something that there's a recommendation to say uh, a history or previous recordings of uh, abuse in this facility that need to go into the rating system in the future? So we've certainly recommended that the information on, on abuse be continued to, you know, made a number of recommendations that would help to identify those those would indirectly feed into the rating system, uh, but, but not, not tied directly to the registry. Great. All right. We have a tremendous number of really high quality uh, facilities in Oklahoma uh, with staff that love the folks they serve with and love getting a chance to serve uh, seniors and, and, and all of that care. Have you been able to note in any of your previous work what denotes to a family when they're looking or common characteristics of really high quality care facilities? For instance, uh, local ownership, transparency in data, uh, relationships with local hospitals, uh, allowing cameras to be in facilities uh, owned by the, the patient's families. Have you noticed certain things that if those things are present, this seems to be a higher quality, less abuse facility? We did talk to nursing homes as well as to uh, invest inspectors as to some of the challenges and that issues that would be in homes that were more or less likely to have abuse. Many of those related to staffing, uh, whether we heard from uh, staff that we spoke with directly that in some homes they had resources that if there were a difficult situation, if they were stretched, they could turn to other staff that could relieve them. Uh, other homes, they said they really did not have that flexibility to turn to other staff and may feel underworked and, and overstretched. We also heard that there were more challenges uh, often in homes that might have a diverse population, including both elderly and younger residents, those with cognitive issues, as well as other issues, and so that that can pose more challenges. Certainly, consumers need to look not only at the five-star rating, but other information that's available and talk to uh, the nursing home, ombuds, and others to find out the better performing homes. So how would, how would individuals get that information? Well, the starting point can be information on nursing home compare, but going beyond that to uh, talking to ombuds, to discharge planners from hospitals that may know more local situations, certainly important to visit the homes and to talk to the staff and administration. So several years ago, uh, this Congress worked with uh, FAA and air traffic control uh, to be able to set up a system uh, in place that FAA led the way on. So if there was a mistake made by a controller, uh, aircraft got too close. In the past, they were scored low on that, and so they were trying to hide that. Uh, they transitioned that to say, no, we want mistakes to be more public on this and want to find a way to be able to get more information out on reporting. A lot of our conversation today has been about reporting. How do we get information out so that if something occurs, it's not hidden? Do you have recommendations uh, to how to change the way we do reporting to increase the number of reports, and so then we can make the changes that are necessary. Yeah, we did recommend that CMS uh, revisit the information that facilities are required to report when an incident does occur. 
that, that uh, requirement exists now in nursing homes uh, for the homes, but we found that often the information was not as if, timely. If, there, if there's a disincentive to report, then you're going to get fewer reports, but we need more information, not less, at the end of the day. And so I think that would be an area that we need to continue to be able to find what's a better way to be able to get more information out and so that we don't have folks hiding it with a disincentive, but we've got to get that out in the, in the daylight. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank